one of the most beautiful showgrounds in the country. But sadly, our marquee seems to be missing this year. The rabbit section, that is. By now, we should be set up and raring to go. It should look something like this, full of people and stewards, with judging, and I have to say plenty of laughter. But sadly, not even last year's best in show is able to return to compete. Sadly, it's not meant to be this year. So we at the rabbit section thought we'd give you a whistle stop tour into what goes on behind the scenes in our marquee. Let's start off with the British Rabbit Council or the BRC. The British Rabbit Council is our governing body and on their website, the BRC.org, is plenty of information to help you get started if you are interested in showing. We also have a magazine called The Fur and Feather and that tells us where the shows are, who's running them and how to enter. There's plenty of information if you request it from the BRC. Now the Usk show is very special to me because it's my mum's memorial show and this is what we are all aiming to win, the Crystal Bell. So let's get on to the rabbits. There are four sections. The first section is a fancy. And they're usually the smaller breeds with very short flyback coats. This, as you can see, is a Polish. And this one's grandfather won Usk two years ago. Now he's only a baby, but he is actually fully grown. And you can see they are extremely sprightly, very fit and rearing to go. They are the ultimate show rabbit, really. He's actually molting at the moment, and I deliberately brought him on to show you because this is a normal process for rabbits and people do tend to panic when this happens. So I wouldn't show him with molt. I would make sure that he's in full coat because obviously, as a judge, you're looking for a, a complete rabbit, an all-round rabbit. So he is supposed to be very fine-boned, as you can see from his front legs great little ears, they're not that big, he's very very alert and then when you turn him in profile his type from the tip of his ears through to the, his toes is a straight line and he has a lovely quarter moon shaped back and then as I said most fancy rabbits have this very very quick coat, I say most because there's always exceptions to the rule. The Angora is one of those exceptions with this exceptionally long coat and the Trianta also has a slightly longer coat for a fancy breed. However, you then see the more popular English breeds which are great for pets. You also see dwarfs which are another small breed in the fancy. The Tan, and this is a lilac tan, but there's blue, chocolate and black. And another example of a fancy breed, of course, is the Dutch, once extremely popular in South Wales. We now move on to looking at the lop section, named because their ears lop to the side of the head, which forms a horseshoe shape when viewed from the front. There are different varieties of lop, as shown by these images here. French lops, German lop, we have a blue miniature lop, and then we have a longer variety called a cashmere lop. Dwarf lops are also popular as pets and this is a seal point dwarf lop. And then we have the miniature lion lop which is also a seal point colour. The English lop is one of the oldest varieties of rabbit in the fancy. So now we move on to the fur breeds. And the fur breeds are generally the quieter, bigger breeds of the fancy. Rosie is an exception, as her breed, which is a sable, are a little bit smaller. But what the fur breeds have in common is that they all have this incredible coat. They were, of course, once bred four pelts and four neat, but that's not done anymore, thank goodness. Now, when I'm judging, if I was judging a rabbit such as Rosie, 
I'd be looking at the shape of her, her colour, as the points are slightly darker. And she has a little bit of a darker bit in the middle of her back, which we call the saddle. And then I'm also looking at her bright white points inside her ears, her neck, and she's got a lovely white belly too. And of course, as I said earlier, this beautiful coat, soft and dense. Now most of the fur breeds have these amazing coats, all slightly different, but all to standard. Perhaps you could actually have a look the next time you come in the tent for a fur breed and have a chat to one of the stewards to explain its standard to you. Other fur breeds include the Beveren, this is a blue, the Ajanti, and this one is called a Noir. The Continental Giant, very distinctive because of its huge size. The Alaska, jet, jet black in colour. And the Chinchilla, very well known, very popular once upon a time. Now the last section is the Rex section. But as you know, Rex means king. And when you feel these coats, you'll understand why. The Rex rabbits were once used for their pelts because they have a coat like velvet. Of course, that's not the case these days. And we show them for their pure beauty. This is an ermine Rex, and she's only a baby. And she's a full standard Rex, because we have two varieties, the miniature and the standard. Now with the Rex, the points are on the coat, 40 points, and the colour, 40 points with the shape of the rabbit only being 20. But for us, that's the most important part, really, because you can't put a coat on something that isn't there. Their coat must be very short and plush, very dense. That's because there's more hairs per square inch on a Rex coat than any other breed. Now this is, as I say, is a youngster. She was bred for the Usk show, so she won't be going this year. And she'll be having her own litter in readiness for next year. In my box, just by here, I've also got a miniature Rex for you to have a look at, which is a different colour and obviously a very different size. Come on. Chicken. Here he is. Now the miniature Rex is half, almost, of a standard Rex with the weight being up to a maximum of four pound and eight ounces, whereas a standard is more six to eight pound. Um, if I put them next to each other, you'll clearly see the difference. She's much bigger and she's only five months old, whereas he is two and a half years old. And he's called a Martin Seal. Again, beautiful plush coat, which when you run your hands through, you just go, ooh, it's lovely. And a lot of people like Rex because they have a fabulous nature. Both the standards and the minis are excellent pets. Grooming these is very, very easy. Just a little bit of water on your hands and groom them through. And obviously, when you're showing them, they have to be as white underneath as they are on top. You can't take a rabbit to a show with big black feet so that's a challenge in itself. The only thing is if you do have a Rex rabbit as a pet make sure that when you're letting it out in the garden it has got something soft to run on because the pads are very very fine and you don't want to take the fur off of those. So that's the Rex section but we have lots of other colours not just Ermin or Martin Seal. Other colours of Rex include the orange, the smoke pearl Rex, the otter Rex, the more unusual tortoiseshell Rex, and the castor Rex. I hope you've enjoyed the whistle stop tour of the rabbit section and maybe next year you'll be able to pop in and see this chap and many more of the breeds I've discussed so far. Please feel free to go to the BRC website should you have any other queries. 
Good luck and take care and see you next year at USK.